technical case topic as well as a topic very useful for uh, uh, both UG as well as UG exams as well as for your PG entrance exam. This is a classical topic called as uh, right iliac fossa mass. So please remember this topic on right iliac fossa mass. In a right iliac fossa mass, to understand what is right iliac fossa, before going to right iliac fossa, please remember we have nine quadrants in the abdomen. So nine regions. Okay, have, we have nine regions in the abdomen as shown in the picture. So this is epigastric region. This is right hypochondrium. This is left hypochondrium. This is left lumbar, right lumbar, umbilical, right iliac fossa, left iliac fossa, and hypogastric region, hypogastric region. So totally nine regions are there. And we surgeons, we always add up two more regions, that is two inguinal region. And what is the next one? What is the next one which I should always add? So in an in examination of any abdominal cases, we should examine the nine regions in the abdomen. Two inguinal region. Uh, yes, Srinivas, you are correct, but there is one more region. Two inguinal region and one more region, yes. You can add up genital also, but there is one important region that is called as left supraclavicular fossa. Never forget to examine left supraclavicular fossa. This is a very important region in abdominal examination. Can somebody tell me what is the reason why I am telling you examine the left supraclavicular fossa also. That is a very important region. We should not forget. The reason is, yes. Please don't forget, that is a very important reason. That is, this is a cisterna chile, which is taking the lymphatics from all over the abdomen. From all over the abdomen, the lymphatics will drain into cisterna chile. Very good, Sharma, that's absolutely correct. From here, this is a thoracic duct, which takes the lymphatics and take it directly to left supraclavicular node. That node is called as which house node. You are absolutely correct. But all of you might be having one fixed mind that Virchow's node is only for stomach cancer. Please remember, Virchow's node can be seen in any cancer from the abdomen. Any cancer in the abdomen. Even colon cancer can have Virchow's node. Even uh, any pancreatic cancer can have Virchow's node. So Virchow's node is a lymphatic drainage from the thoracic duct. It, it drains into the left supraclavicular fossa. So missing a Virchow's node is always a... It's a is a major risk in a clinical case examination. In a final year clinical case examination, by chance, if a patient had a witch house node and you missed the node, you are in trouble. Please don't forget this. So nine regions you should examine. You should always examine the nine regions. So don't forget the nine regions. Epigastrium, umbilical, hypogastrium, right hypochondrium, left hypochondrium, right lumbar, left lumbar, right iliac fossa, left iliac fossa. These nine regions are divided by two simple lines. One running at the level of L1 vertebra, another running at the level of L5 vertebra. At the level of L1 vertebra, the plane is called as transpyloric plane and another plane is transtubercular plane. And the two lines run at the mid-clavicular line. Okay, this is at the level of mid-clavicular line, mid-clavicular line. Draw a straight line from mid-clavicular towards downward. So mid-clavicular line, mid-clavicular line, transtubercular line, trans tubercular transpyloric. So why transpyloric? Because it corresponds to pyloric muscle. So when you draw this line, if you very closely watch, there will be pyloric sphincter at the transpyloric plane at the level of, that is why it is called as transpyloric plane. Transpyloric plane is at the level of L1 vertebra. Draw the surface marking of transpyloric plane as a clinical question. Take an inch tape. Please remember, take an inch tape. Keep it at the suprasternal notch and keep it at the pubic symphysis. The midline, for example, it is totally 40 centimeter. At the 20th centimeter, you draw a line. That is an absolute transpyloric plane. So please don't forget that is called as absolute transpyloric plane. So transpyloric plane is a very important line. You should not forget. It is at the level of pylorus at L1 vertebra. It is also called as Addison's plane. So now we are focusing, this chapter I will be focusing only towards the right iliac fossa mass. So right iliac fossa mass, when I am going to the right iliac fossa, so what are the structures, normal structures in the right iliac fossa? See, when a, a surgeon is nothing but an extended anatomist. So when you are very strong in anatomy, you can be always strong in surgery. It's a natural phenomenon. So when you are strong in anatomy, what are the structures in the right iliac fossa? Normal structures in the right iliac fossa. Can you tell me? 
So what are the structures normally in the right iliac fossa? Cecum, appendix, terminal ilium, terminal ilium. So these are the three important structures. Cecum will be there, appendix will be there, terminal ilium might be there, iliocecal junction that is called as iliocecal junction will be there. So cecum, appendix, terminal ilium, iliocecal junction, all these are intraperitoneal contents, intraperitoneal, inside the peritoneum. So I'm not going into the extra peritoneal contents, extra peritoneal contents, you will have a ureter, blood vessels, all those things will be extra peritoneal. So intraperitoneal contents, cecum, appendix, terminal ilium, iliocecal junction. So now you can get problems from any of these structures and that can present to you as a mass, right iliac fossa mass. So you have to now, first of all, tell me the mass in the right iliac fossa is between the transpyloric plane and the right midclavicular line. It's a very small fossa. Majority of the problems in the abdomen will be seen in the right iliac fossa. So parietal swellings also can happen there from the muscles. From the muscles, you can develop desmoid tumor. Please remember, you can see patients can develop desmoid tumors in the muscle. The desmoid tumor of the arising from the muscles, lipoma, lipomas, an abscess can present, a pass. abscess can present subcutaneously as a parietal swelling. So any so sebaceous cyst, so any parietal swelling can be present here. So how to differentiate it is a parietal swelling or an intra-abdominal swelling by a simple test. What test? It is by leg, leg, leg raising test. When I do a leg raising test, please remember, these will become more prominent. These swellings will become more prominent. That's a very simple test. So first clinical test, when I ask the patient to lift the lower limb, both the lower limb, the abdomen muscles become very tight and I will, I will have these swellings more prominent. Desmoid tumors, lipomas, abscess, sebaceous cyst, all these will become more prominent. If it is intra-abdominal pathology, they will become less prominent. They will become less prominent. The, on palpation, the swelling which is easily palpable before now becomes less prominent. So now intra-abdominally, I can divide them into two. They are intra-abdominal, intra-peritoneal, intra-peritoneal, inside the peritoneum and retro-peritoneal. So retroperitoneal and intraperitoneal swellings are easily differentiated if it is in the upper abdomen by a simple examination test. What is it? If the swelling is in the epigastric region or right hypochondrium, left hypochondrium, if the swelling is anywhere in this place, anywhere in this place, I can say, okay, this is a intraperitoneal swelling. How can I tell that? Simple test. What is it? Yes, it's a clinical test. Intraperitoneal swellings moves with Respiration. Why it is moving with respiration? Because they are attached to the diaphragm. As the intraperitoneal swellings are attached to the diaphragm, they will move with the respiration. But RIF mass is very far away from the diaphragm, may not move. RIF mass may not move with respiration. So therefore, this finding is not so typical finding. So intraperitoneal swellings, usually in other areas, will move with respiration. But RIF mass will not move. But maybe mobile on palpation. You can move it on palpation. You can move it like this or like this. You can move it on palpation. Intraperitoneal swellings can be mobile on palpation and retroperitoneal swellings are not mobile usually. And not mobile. And another test usually we do for other places is knee chest position. Putting the patient in knee elbow position, like knee elbow. Ask them to lie down like this and see for the swelling falling forward, knee elbow position, retroperitoneal swellings not falls forward. Whereas intraperitoneal swellings will fall forward. So simple test, we have to first of all know where is the swelling arising from, whether it is retroperitoneal or intraperitoneal or parietal, only three or four simple tests. Parietal swelling, leg raising test, swelling becomes more prominent. Intraabdominal swelling on knee, elbow position, the swelling falls forward is intraperitoneal, not falling forward is retroperitoneal. 
So tell me what are the retroperitoneal masses you can get in right iliac fossa means undescended testis. Undescended testis can present as a mass like a seminoma. So the patient might have not had a testis in the right scrotum and out might have come with a seminoma. Huge seminoma, undescended testis going for seminoma. Unascended kidney can present like this. Unascended kidney can present as a right iliac fossa mass. Please remember transplantation of the kidney. Transplanted kidney is usually placed in the right iliac fossa only. So people who are undergoing transplant, the kidney is placed in the right iliac fossa. That is also may present to you as a mass. Iliac nodes. Iliac nodes. Iliac vessel aneurysms. Iliac vessel aneurysms. Soyas muscle abscess. Soyas muscle abscess. Please don't forget, these are the retroperitoneal masses in the right iliac fossa. Undescended testis, unascended kidney, transplanted kidney, iliac nodes, iliac vessel aneurysm, psoas, muscle abscess. All these are masses which are seen retroperitoneally. You can, you don't muck up anything. You can understand what are the structures behind the peritoneum means. You will naturally know testis, which is not descended, kidney, which is not ascended, iliac group of nodes, iliac vessel, psoas, muscle abscess. All these will present in retroperitoneum as a mass. Are you clear? So these are the commonly kept right iliac fossa masses, but usually in exam, you get only three cases. Cancer arising from the cecum, ileocecal tuberculosis and appendicular mass are the three clinical cases. So what are the other rare cases? Rare RIF masses are, so very rare cases. These are all very rare cases. Please don't forget Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease presenting as a mass in the right iliac fossa is very rare in uh, India, but right iliac fossa mass, it's also a right iliac fossa mass. Actinomycosis. Actinomycosis. Amoeboma. Amoeboma can present as a mass or mesentric nodes. Mesentric nodes can present as a rare right iliac fossa mass. So, right iliac fossa mass commonly kept for exam will be carcinoma cecum ileocecal TB and appendicular mass. Just from the history, you can say these three cases. So when you see, when you fill up this table, the topic is actually over. The exam cases are going to be ileocecal TB, appendicular mass and carcinoma cecum. So tell me, appendicular mass, what will be the history? The patient will give history of Murphy's triad. What is Murphy's triad? Can you tell me? Yes, please tell me what is Murphy's triad in an appendicular. In an appendicitis, there will be a triad called as Murphy's triad. What are Murphy's triad findings? There will be pain, yes, vomiting, and fever. So these are the three findings seen in appendicular mass. Where will you get Murphy's sign? Can you tell me where will you get Murphy's sign? Murphy's triad is an appendicitis. Murphy's sign is seen for? Yes, please post the answers in the chat box. This is a demo session. See, the demo session, we expect you to know what is actually done in our live classes. Live classes, we do a lot of interaction with the students. So more interaction is important here because this video will be available for you later also. Therefore, uh, interact more with the faculties. Let it clarify. Your doubts should be clarified in a live class because everything is available, recorded in various places, various platforms. But in a live class, if you get... More doubts, that is very important. See, Murphy's sign is not seen in cholelithiasis. It is seen in cholecystitis. 